This is the American Conference on ESPN. Welcome inside a sold out Yingling Center in Tampa, Florida for the first time since 2001. A showdown between two of the top teams in the American Conference, Florida Atlantic in Tampa. And we're gonna play basketball. Sort of an inauspicious start. I've been calling games in Tampa here for South Florida for the last eight years. I have never seen the type of juice in this building like we got this afternoon. This is awesome. Starting lineup this year for this team. Fresh faces in Amir Abdul Rahim's starting five. Oh! Oh! <laughs> and one of five Division I programs, Mike. To not have a player into the transfer portal. Uncommon continuity for this Owls team. Jose Placer, one of a number of transfers, runs the point today for South Florida. As that goes down for Chris Youngblood. Guys not running off and doing their own thing, but staying committed to what got them to the Final Four a year ago. And that has a lot to do with why he decided to schedule the 36 most difficult non-conference schedule in the country. Playing loaded where he's in the country. Well, two of the top three teams in the conference are led yep. by first-year head coaches. That's it's right. been a remarkable season in this conference. And Ross Hodge has done a fantastic job in North Texas. That defense, I don't know how you score against that defense. How do you stop Chris Young? Defense, they are an average defensive team when it comes to guarding the three. They're eighth, right below the middle of the pack in the American Conference in defending three-point field goal percentage. And South Florida hit over 54% of their triples against Tulsa. Tulsa. Plus there, gets into the teeth of the defense. In the American Conference this season. Inside to Golden, and he rims out a dunk. Defensively turning defense into offense, but there's something to understand though. Florida Atlantic, they've been down before, they've been up before, been there, done that, all the way to the Final Four last season. They've won 20 games this season. They can weather the storm. Player this season and last, coming off the bench for the Owls. Here's Self Miguel. Youngblood. Oh, Drops no. in a contested three. Oh no! That's Young Bloods. Against Tulsa. All eight of those coming in the second half. He doesn't force shots, Mike. That was a great job of coming off a pin down action to draw. And he said, oh, this, there's something special and different about this kid. Absolutely have to have him. He called him the most competitive player. He leads all scores by a large margin as he heads to the bench. Amir Abdur Rahim added. And Chris Youngblood single-handedly turned around the culture at Kennesaw State. Here's Reed up and under, and the freshman draws a foul. And Yuri's in college basketball this year in the Big 12, the top tips. We're in desperate need of a bucket on the wrong end of a 7-0 run. Greenlee with five. Catch and shoot three. Martin with eight of Florida Atlantic's 12 points to start the game as Miguel rolls all the way to the cup and lays it in. This team set to Chris Youngblood's Batman this season, averaging 14 points a game. Really a three level score. Martin through contact, puts it down, and he's in double figures with an adjustment period for him to be the guy with the target on his back. And he's really a lot of times playing second fiddle right behind John L. Davis. So it takes a lot of maturity to be the second guy. And that is a Atlantic bench wants a replay. Tough drive by Martin. Big block by Knox, who's hit a three. Now a big Davis backing down Placer. Oh. 
to be outdone, a one-hand jam. That have played now 17 times. And South Florida has owned the series. 14-2 and two all time. They've never lost to Florida Atlantic in this building. Placera step back. Oh, that he got him. Silky. Oh, he got him. Placera's just in the park right now. Greenlee, Golden. Chance to the three-point play. Left. No matter who they're playing, Florida Atlantic's always within striking distance because of how in the season, but he's only 63% from the free throw line. If he gets anywhere close to 75%, you're talking, he's going to be averaging 20 points a game. <laughs> Pryor goes right into the chest of the same. Big reason why. 6'10", can shoot, can yeah. dribble, can play on the perimeter. What's not to like? Had a really nice pass along the baseline as well. Well, he's coming off a game in which he had his sixth done as the rest of the half. Terrific this season for the Fighting Irish. We'll switch all five positions. You can see Trey Carroll out on the perimeter. He's the center. Inside of Youngblood. Fighting for the rebound. Taps it out to Pryor. Zipped inside the Stroud. Second. Davis. Boyd trying to wiggle around Pryor and does kisses it off the window. That's such a hard play to make for so many players. keeping his balance. Miguel, but second contested three. First half for South Florida. John L. Davis, this team's leading scorer, still scoreless in the game until now. Goes right into the chip. Look how far out Florida Atlantic's pushing South Florida's offense. Back to back for South Miguel. Doesn't matter. Sell out since 2001 at South Florida. Davis really well defended, but a better shot and a chance at a three-point play. You could just keep it really simple, Matt. You just said it. They have to do this half. That's a part of it, but Ford Atlantic's offense is not built around one guy. Anybody can be the star. That's what makes them difficult to guard. You say the same thing for South Florida. As young blood will get to ESPN Plus. Youngblood makes some bump from the floor. Picked off by Selton Miguel. Martin catch and shoot. That's a three. From 10 points already in this first half, they ran a great stagger screen action to get him off the top of the key, going from right to left. 13 in the game for Martin. Uh -oh, Miguel is no in his way. Straight away three. Miguel comes away with it. Oh, oh, rejected at the rim. Elijah Martin. <laughs> Weatherspoon tries a three. And it just rims out. Hit every part of the 10. And there was a foul on the floor. How about this block by Elijah Martin in transition? An absolutely absurd display of athleticism from Elijah Martin. I mean, that was, you said it, that was a volleyball spike. With this much of a lead on Florida Atlantic. And 
the shove from Corey Walker. Yeah, that th this quality of offense. <laughs> Ten to shoot. Here is McCall, and the pass was too high, and it goes back to Florida Atlanta. That run and jump defense worked. Come get Martin open. Leads all Owl scores with 13, does Elijah Martin. Five seconds left in the first half. There is Martin. Vlad <laughs> Golden got tagged with a dead ball technical right here. Fouling Stroud. This was after the horn throws. And he makes the first. Young. And shot over 50% from the floor. And the obvious statement is that it was a lot what South Florida did, but Florida Atlantic looked a little discombobulated in the first half, and that's a foul. He's averaging nearly 16 assists per game in league play. It's almost as if they're waiting for South Florida to make a mistake. They're shooting the ball well. Their defense was locked in. They're making free throws. Big start for the Bulls. To your point, they are 11 for 11 from the free throw line this afternoon. And a 20-point lead. Largest of the game for South Florida. Greenlee, check that. Boyd takes it to the cup for, that enters the day. 18 and 5. It's the best start in program history. And they've won 10 straight in league play. A program record here in South Florida. Knox. Will put it in on a silky teardrop in the lane. It was good action. That's called zoom action on the right side of the floor. And Knox having himself quietly. Just a really nice game. Knox with seven points along with a pair of assists. Five points on two of seven for Florida Atlantic's leading scorer. Placer. Oh, that is sick. <laughs> From Jose Placer behind the back. to Martin. Kick out to Boyd. In possession, the ball hit the paint three times. It's exhausting to guard. What a cut. What a cut and what a pass from Corey Walker. Who scores the points and who's called into the interview room after the game? Walker will get two shots. He was fouled. Well, tomorrow is Monday on ESPN. Davis got away with the foul there. Plus, Sarah goes right at Davis and floats it over. No surprise, scored over 1,400 points in North Florida. Kings a three. And they needed that. Whoever is guarding Placer that Fort Atlantic is running action for to try to get in a drive or a post up scenario. Boyd. Oh, and the putback from Weatherspoon. And five on Florida Atlantic. Youngblood has 20. Pryor, open, hammer! A turn defense to offense. And the numbers don't lie. They're winning the rebounding battle, the steal battle, the passing battle. They have more assists than Florida Atlantic does. All the little things, even if you take out the three-point shooting, which has been prolific, Pryor had his pocket picks. Trey Carroll rejected by Pryor, but there was a foul. It was Doug Shows coming in and making the call. One of our three officials this afternoon. And the and in the words of his head coach, stops in a row, and South Florida has seven different kills in this game. Tap back 
Back is good. Corey Walker Jr. put it in. Golden. Floater is good. About South Florida winning in every category. Rebounding has been one of those as well. Reed splashes a deep two. South Florida has an answer for everything Florida Atlantic has thrown at them in this game. Davis counted in the foul and a chance to complete the three point play. Ten points. And cheers of overrated ringing down from 10,659 on hand. Boyd goes coast to coast. They are down 20 on the road with seven and a half to go here at South Florida. Golden somehow oh, got it and man. put it down. A grown man jam by Vlad Golden. The catch, the big fella. How did you catch it? How did you dunk it? Trying to get Florida Atlantic back into it. They have been the surprise of college basketball. Pick ninth in the preseason. Mike, pick 13th. And should the results stand here and there, they would be in sole possession of second place. Uh, a steal in the three. An unnecessary foul in the fourth one. Both teams in the bonus the rest of the way. John L. Davis seems to have found a bit of a rhythm here in the second half. Tries to go inside to Golden, who is fouled by good. Walker. And there might be something extra there beyond just a common foul. And that was a bear hug by Corey Walker Jr. And now Golden showing some emotion as he tries to huddle up with his teammates. Can't guard Vlad Golden with one shoe. That's in the dictionary is virtually impossible. To me, that's a flagrant one. That's no play on the basketball. You're grabbing Golden with two hands. Golden today. It's a third. Davis baseline was fouled and two shots coming for the junior from Gary, Indiana. That's on ESPN2. Davis cuts the deficit to 10. Florida Atlantic has gone on a 15-0 run over the last minute and change. And a kick ball against Lorient. Got crossed up on. That's, I mean, you're, you're a treat. Makes them both stop to 15-0 Owls run. A lot of maturity shown from the young freshman. 12-point game, less than seven minutes to go. Dangerous pass. Golden, Golden with a one-hand jam, posterizing Chris Youngblood. Golden catches everything. And there was a foul there on Boyd. That looked intentional. 4%. That's Coach Dusty May trying to play the odds. And it worked out. One for two. Davis! Oh, just missed out on a chance at an and one. But again, two shots coming for John. Minutes and 23 seconds is going to be the key. to you don't want to take your foot off the gas pedal, so many teams fall into that trap. You're playing, you know, not to lose instead of playing to win. Five seconds for Miguel. And he draws a foul today for Miguel. You're shooting 89% from the free throw line. That's going to that's gonna win. 21 leads all South Florida scores. 1-3-1 one, one zone defense for South Florida. the window that was pretty foul pushing Davis going out of bounds into the freshman Reed five to shoot 
Reed over Davis draws a foul. Track and field starting Friday and the women's basketball tournament. FAU has made its last seven field goals. Boyd pressing the issue. We'll head to the free throw line. In the second half, and have chipped away because of their ability to get to the line. Ten point game, 440 to go in Tampa. Miguel to the cup, almost had it blocked. The foul on the putback. No. Correct. Thank you for cleaning that up. No problem. And so Miguel tying his career high with 23. <laughs> Did they count the bucket? Should count. That was bang bang from that angle. Yeah. This little second half run for FAU. Shooting lineup for Florida Atlantic. Davis, Martin, which has created issues in this second half. South Florida has to be very careful not to play to relax. Freshman on the floor in this game. And it's funny you bring such a top 10 player out of the state of New York. Played for prep powerhouse. Inside the golden with 21 today. Give him 23. And it's a two possession game in South Florida. Almost a turnover and then a foul on Martin. And if you want to foul somebody, he's the guy to foul on the line here this afternoon, particularly for South Florida, for the Bulls. They had Golden, missed him. Got tangled up with Walker. Martin got rejected by Walker, standing tall defensively. And it's one back by the Bulls. Look at this block from Walker. Straight up, straight down does not break the plane, doesn't move his arms forward. Hang that in, loo, in the loo for textbook defense. <laughs> Got them both, back to a nine point lead for South Florida. Now you start the conversation for Florida Atlantic of, do we have an open three? That's your thought process. Here is one. Davis buries it from the corner. Miguel off the bounce, lays it in off the window. New career high for Selton Miguel with 25. Martin. Has 15. Under two minutes to go at the Yingling Center. 10,659 on hand in the first sellout since 2001. They're trying to take the ball out of Miguel's hands. It finds Stroud, almost coughed it up. Knocks a three. Walker, right place, right time, and a second opportunity for the Bulls. Less than 10 to shoot. Inside to Walker, lays it home. Call a timeout and save the possession. One timeout left for Florida Atlantic. Both teams in the double bonus. Davis. Thought about a three. Martin spins out of trouble, lays it in. 87 81, 59 and a half seconds to go. Reed, I thought he double dribbled there. Continues, still no foul, and there is Gaffney reaching in. And that will send the true freshman 
Jaden Reed to the free throw line where he is seven for how about the freshman Jaden Reed breaking the press six point game door is open for the Owls He's thinking three well, good defense from Miguel. Miguel. Yeah. Gaffney on the drive counted in the foul a chance to make it a three-point game in Tampa. From a role identification standpoint, embodies that perfectly. Rims it out, Pryor fighting for it. It's a tie-up. And the possession arrow points to Florida Atlantic. Well defended by Jaden Reed. 19 on the timer. 34 and a half seconds left in the game. Two, both teams in the double bonus. John L. Davis. Step back three. Oh! Got it from downtown. Oh! One point game at the Yingling Center. Points in the first half has 15 in the second. None bigger than these three right here. This is John L. Davis to a team. Calm, cool, and competitive as all get outs. What a monster three from John. Florida, they do have one timeout left. In to Youngblood, playing with four fouls, and he is fouled. And Martin wasn't supposed to do. Three-point game, Florida Atlantic without a timeout. And everybody on the court for Florida Atlantic, except for Golden, is a three-point shooter. Ball in the hands of Davis. Gets downhill, off the side of the rim. Rebound out to Sutton Miguel. Youngblood pulls it away. And that might do it. First miss, explode. 10,659 on hand. First sellout since 2001. Four seconds. Gaffney at three. Won't go. Florida Atlantic goes down, and South Florida's storybook season continues in Tampa.